Four questions to the Minister. We now move to topical questions and I call Colm Eastwood. Mr Eastwood. Thank you, uh, Mr Speaker. Can I thank the Minister for her answer so far and can I ask her, um, if, has she got the figures as to how many young people have entered into the agri-food sector in the last couple of years? I don't have those figures on me, but I'm happy to, to provide them to the member. But it's safe to say that um, the fact that our agriculture colleges are oversubscribed, that in itself is, is fantastic and shows that young people now see a future in farming and food. Where in, in the past, a number of years ago, it would have been very much seen as a sunset industry. So the fact that we have record numbers um, of young people wanting to get into farming and food, that's very positive for the future. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And can I thank the Minister for her answer? Can I ask her what work that she does, does she do with other departments like Dedi and, and Dell uh, to provide maybe grant assistance or whatever to encourage people not only to get involved in, in the business but to actually have employment uh, after they go to the college? Well, I mean, there's quite a range of, of um, areas of support available from even from my own department, um, particularly for uh, and if you look at the rural development programme and the amount of businesses that avail of support through through that avenue. We have process and marketing grants going forward to help people expand. So there's quite a range of supports that are there and that's open to everybody. But obviously it's, it's good um, that we have so many young people, as I said, wanting to stay in the industry and see a future in the industry and I want to be able to encourage that to, to grow. The Agri-Food Strategy Report, which I talked about earlier, is a joint piece of work between myself and Detti. But um, even alongside that, in the report, there are a number of recommendations which are um, applicable to Dale. So we are working together and in partnership for, um, to promote young people coming forward in the industry and try and uh, create the conditions or assist the industry to create the conditions that people see a future in farming and food. Jim Wiles. Mr Wiles. Could the Minister please let us know why she objected to the transfer of the functions of the Rivers Agency to the Department of Regional Development, which would, particularly in urban areas, have led to a more unified approach to flooding? Um, well, the member will be aware that he is referring to the PEDGE report, and there was quite a number of recommendations, all of which have been taken forward. But I don't believe that you just need to willy-nilly pick out things and transfer into other departments without having a proper strategic discussion. The executive will be looking at uh, as all the departments as a whole, and then I'm very happy for it to be considered as part of that bigger discussion. But I don't think that it was the solution to solve all problems by just picking out Rivers Agency and putting it into the DRD. Mr. Wilde. The Minister accepted that the bulk of Rivers Agency work now is in the urban situation. And if she is convinced that that would lead to a more uh, efficient resolution of flooding problems, will she support the transfer? I'm absolutely open to taking a look at, at it in the round. As I said, it's part of the wider executive discussion around all the different departments and where things should um, comfortably sit. Very happy to take a look at it. But at this moment in time, as I said, the PEDGE report created or set out a number of recommendations, all of which have been taken forward or are currently being worked through. This one, I don't believe, is something that we need to do as a standalone issue, but I'm very happy to take a look at it in the round. Brenda Hale. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Can I ask the Minister to inform the House what work can be done to assist farm businesses Farm businesses who are experiencing difficulties in connecting renewable energy projects to the grid. Well, we dealt with that issue um, earlier in question time. As I said, one of the, the biggest problems is that um, when it comes to uh, giving grant aid support, Europe has very clearly set down that um, you have to be selling off 100%. Uh, to, you cannot be using it for your own use to offset your own costs. So there's a particular problem with that and something I think that we seriously need to address. I think there's opportunities to address it in the new rural development programme and how we take it forward. However, um, we're still going to be bound by European Commission uh, decisions, but there's a, a clear problem that people can't get a connection to the grid. They can get the grant support, they can get everything in place, but they can't get a connection to the grid. And again, uh, you have to have your own single connection, and again, that's creating all sorts of problems, a separate connection to the grid than your own supply. So there's a range of problems I think need to be identified, and we have an opportunity to possibly look at that in the new programme. Brenda Hill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the Minister for answer. Then, will, will the Minister today then give a commitment to farmers that she will help her department will help them look for cheaper energy suppliers? Absolutely, I'm always happy to, to assist the farming community in, in whatever um, we can do to, to, to move forward in the most effective and efficient manner. This is a particular issue around renewable energies. It's something that we all want to see more of, but there are barriers then to, to farmers being able to take this forward because of e European Commission rules. So that's something that we need to seriously address, and something that I'm engaged with the Commission on. Mr. Kelly. Would the Minister give us an assessment of the impact of the rural white paper, especially in terms of improving the lives of rural people? Well, the rural white paper was um, a really significant piece of work that was taken forward in the previous term um, under Michelle Gilvenu, and a lot of progress has been made in terms of um, taking forward all the actions that have been identified <coughs> in, that, in that document. However, 
I want to take a fresh look at it because I don't want it to be just something that is a tick box exercise for departments to say that they've delivered on what they had previously promised. I very much wanted to be a living and working uh, document. So I've asked officials to actually take a look at that again and also, in addition to that, to explore the opportunities for um, legislating for rural proofing. And also, um, I'm very keen to again look at the idea of a rural champion because I think um, there will be a key role for a rural champion in, in, in moving forward. Mr. Kelly. <coughs> Could the Minister, and I thank her for her answer tonight, could you maybe elaborate a wee bit on what the Rural Champion would do, what, what that idea entails? There was some discussion on, on this in, in, in the previous term, and for me, very much, I, I would see it as a body that could be either inside or, or outside of government. I think preferably on the outside, that would champion rural issues, that would look towards um, gaps in terms of information, around um, statistics and I think research that is, that is much needed in terms of rural communities. So they could, and, and how I see it working is it that um, they could be basically uh, providing research, providing information that would, would assist in talent in all departments in terms of their delivery for rural communities. So um, just as I said, as an early concept stage, it is something that was discussed before, but wasn't taken forward at, at that time. But I, I certainly want to explore it again because I do think that it could be a key role and a, and a major win for the rural communities. Lord Morrow. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, does the Minister agree with me that rural crime is a very worrying and escalating problem? What new initiatives has she taken uh, to tackle this worrying trend? I do agree with, with the member, and we have seen um, quite a number of cases highlighted recently, particularly around cattle theft. Um, I regularly engage with um, PSNA and, and uh, Chief Constable and also the Department of Justice to talk about um, how we can work together because the, the levels of rural crime, including agriculture related crime, are, are, are concerning. Um, I actually just recently met the Minister for Justice on the 14th of October where we talked about um, the rural crime unit that's just been established and we now have appointed uh, Danny Gray my, uh, from Veterinary Services Invest Enforcement Branch who are going to sit on that rural crime um, steering unit. So I think that, that's something that's very progressive. We also look at um, uh, working with PSNA, working with the guards. So we, we need to um, very much have a collective approach to this. So um, anything, there's been some very good initiatives, particularly around freeze banding and, and things like that that have been taken forward. But also one of the areas that I want to look at is in future when you're providing grant support for, for example, for small items of, of machinery for around a farm, that maybe alongside that you could put a requirement that it has to be um, identified, you know, so, so it's easily identified if, if stolen. So um, we're looking at a number of initiatives, as I said, we need to work closely with Veterinary Service, the Enforcement Branch, PSNA, Gardaí, Department of Justice, all, all those people that have a role to play in trying to tackle rural crime. Lord Morrow. I thank the Minister for her answer. Just to, in her reply, she mentioned that one of the issues that they had looked at or were taken forward was freeze branding. Could you tell the Assembly today to what extent this has been used in the drive against rural crime? I think it's fair to say that um, we probably would have thought we'd seen a, a, we'd see a, a more of an uptake of, of the initiatives that, than actually occurred. I know PSNA are actually concerned as to why that is, and they're thinking of it as maybe a number of factors. People have just been busy because of the, the, the weather. People have been managing their own farms and getting on with the day-to-day -day business and maybe haven't had, a, had as enough, enough time to, to focus on this sort of area. So one of the things I think they're planning to do is actually go out again and try and uh, recruit more people to actually get involved, because it is a, a positive initiative if um, we can get more and more people to, to take it up, given the fact that cattle theft is, is you know, quite, a, quite a high uh, number at present. And we've seen, actually, in your own constituency, quite a number of cases um, of cattle theft be, um, occurring over the last year. Raymond McCartney. Mr. McCartney. Uh, Colonel Cooler, uh, thank you very much. Uh, Colonel Cooler, uh, I mean, further to the last question, the Minister said in relation to rural crime that she had met with the PSNA. W would there be any particular things which they are doing to, to ensure that the rural crime decreases? Um, yeah, as I said, there's been quite a few local initiatives that PSNA have, have been taking forward, particularly in, in uh, uh, rural areas, and also they've um, got involved in a lot of, particularly around the border areas, they've got involved with um, the Gardaí in terms of um, combating crime in border areas. <coughs> and I think that's key in terms of, um, particularly when it comes to cattle theft, if we're um, serious about um, tackling that, we have to very much have a joined up approach. So um, I, I'm very much committed to making sure that our veterinary enforcement team work with the, the guards, work with the PSNA, and make sure that we roll out um, all the schemes that are there that are to the benefit of rural communities, particularly around 
farm watch um, schemes and, and things like that, which are which are very beneficial. So um, there's a lot of work on going, and we just need to keep um, keep keep on with it and, and keep challenging uh, and trying to eradicate the, the crime that exists out there. Raymond McCartney. Good morning, Agat. Account Cooler goes way to slash an error on regression. Thank you very much, Account Cooler, and can I thank the minister for that answer? She alluded to the fact that her officials, the PSNA and the Garda Sikhanar, are meeting regularly. Is she confident that it's regular enough and, and that they will have particular initiatives to ensure that we tackle rural crime? Yeah, I think, I think there's, a, 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 it's fair to say, there's a significant level of engagement and um, they've actually had quite a, a number of successful um, investigations that have been taken forward. So I think that shows that, that it is working. Um, that we need to do more of it, obviously, but um, I do think that that, um, that shows that it is working, particularly around smuggling um, incidents, which we can see, obviously, people um, trying to, to uh, suppose, move from one jurisdiction to the other. So um, there is very progressive work ongoing, and we just um, need to keep driving forward with that in the time ahead. Mr Clark. Mr Clark. Thank you very much, uh, Mr Speaker. Um, can I ask the Minister, given that the Rural Development Programme is in its final stages, can she give the House an assessment of how she thinks it has went? I think it's been very successful and, uh, and, and it gives me great pleasure whenever you're out and about actually seeing the projects that have benefited um, from it, from, from tourism initiatives to um, community facilities right through to business diversification. So um, I don't have facts and figures with me, but I'm very happy to provide that to the member. But in my opinion, it's been very successful. Um, are there lessons to learn for the future programme? Absolutely. And we're actively doing that now as we work our way through the consultation responses that we've, re- that we've received. Things around simplification, I think there's a number of areas where we can um, improve things and make sure that applications are, particularly for grant aid, are relevant to the level of funding that you're, that you're requesting. So there's a number of areas I think we can improve things, but has it been successful? Yes. Uh, can I thank the, the Minister for that answer? And I mean, I would agree with her, uh, Mr. Speaker, in terms of the success, in terms of getting the money in the ground. However, I'm glad that the Minister did come to the criticism of her own department. Can she outline maybe what her department is going to do in the future, given that it took them almost 18 months to get some of this money on the ground? If the member is referring to what we're going to do to plan for the new programme, that's what we're actually working through now. As I said, the consultation is closed. We're working our way through the responses, and then we decide on the way forward. And I hope to do that in the early part of next year. But for me, I think the focus needs to be on animation now. We need to be working um, the areas up, making sure that um, they're good to go whenever the new programme kicks in. We don't want to have any delays, uh, and I'm making sure that officials are, are working on that actually now as we speak to make sure that we can hit the ground running, we can start spending as soon as, as, soon as the new programme starts. Chris Little. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Can I ask the Minister what work she is doing to break down barriers between people from different backgrounds in rural areas? I can actually write to the member with more detail, but there's a number of projects that have been funded, and again, through um, the Rural Rural Development Programme. Um, One one of the areas recently that we we, um, funded was a um, churches-based forum, so it was like taking a look at, um, I can't remember the the title of the project, but it's basically um, funding for an organisation to bring together people from different churches and discuss rural issues and issues that are relevant to them. So we've been involved in a number of of projects like that. very, very um, happy to, to, to take a look at all of those things, particularly around the tackling poverty and social isolation framework, which I have, because I think that's very much about um, looking at issues that are, that are out there in rural communities and how we can bring people together and, and work, effectively work for them. And one of the successes of that programme actually was um, the, the grant scheme that we brought forward that allowed groups from local areas to apply for what they thought was needed in their area. So it wasn't the department saying this is a pot of money and this is how it should be spent. It very much was um, a, a bottom-up approach. People came forward and said what they thought was needed. So there's been quite a range of, of projects funded through that way also. <coughs> Thank the Minister for her response. I'm uh, encouraged that there is work ongoing. I asked the Minister if she would accept that there are often hidden interfaces in rural areas, unlike the more concrete interfaces we see in urban areas. Yes, absolutely. I think it's something that we need to tackle right across the board. And, um, you're, you're absolutely right. I think sometimes just for the nature of a rural area can be very much a hidden issue. So I'm happy to, to engage and, and to try and break down any barriers that are there and that exist for anybody. Tom Elliott. Mr Elliott. <coughs> Thank you very much, uh, Mr Speaker. And uh, could the Minister confirm that a recent action taken by the Department of Agriculture uh, against a Fermanagh farm was rejected by the courts? I didn't hear the question. I didn't hear the question. <laughs> Can the member repeat the question? Apologies, Chairman uh, or Speaker. Um, can the Minister confirm that a, a recent action taken by the, her department against a Fermanagh farmer was rejected by the courts? Uh, 
I, I won't confirm it because it's a legal issue and I don't want to get into it in the House, but I'm happy to talk to the member outside of the question time. Okay, Mr Speaker, maybe restricts my, my further point, but I, I'll term it in this way. If, if the farmer is cleared, will he now receive his uh, single farm payments that has been withheld for the last number of years? I'm not going to get into the ins and outs of one individual's situation. I'm the Minister of Agriculture. We now move